So electrical system will go through really fast. It's basic anatomy. I won't focus too much of it, but SA node is a sinoatrial node present at the top of the right atrium, as you can see there. That is the pacemaker of the heart. It sends out the signal to beat, and all these green lines are specialized conductive tissue in the heart tissue that transmits these electrical signals in pathways that are very well designed. So it goes from SA node to the junction between the atria and the ventricles. There's a circular part, which is at the center of both atria and both ventricles. It's called the AV node. So it goes from SA node to AV node. AV node branches to both sides of the heart, and then it splits up into the entire ventricle, and then the electrical impulse causes synchronized contraction, and the heart pumps, relaxes, and then pumps. And the pacing is determined by SA node. So we've got slow response fibers and fast response fibers, and I think the main things to take away from that is the resting membrane potential of the slow response, and the slow response ones are generally the pacemakers of the heart. The fast response are like the normal ventricle uh, muscle cells, okay, which contract really fast once they get the impulse. Pacemaker is the one that designs what the rate is, and that's slower. So slow is the pacemaker response, fast is the non-pacemaker one. And slower one, you notice that the resting potential is higher than the, the other ones. Do you notice that difference? Resting is about minus 80 there, it's about minus 60 in the slower. Right, so it's higher, which means there's some cells that ion channels which we won't go into, but there's some spontaneous ion channels by the slow response, slowly, slowly, slowly depolarize, depolarize by itself, and then it fires and then relaxes, comes down, again by itself, slowly, slowly, slowly depolarizes because there's some resting set, uh, channels that are active all the time without any impulse, and it fires again, and then same thing happens. So that gives it an internal clock, like a rhythmicity. You don't need like in the muscular junction we study the action potential comes in, then things get released, then the muscle fires, whatever, right? In these slow pacemaker cells, they don't need external input. Their cells and their physiology are designed such that these, the potential resting is higher already, closer to threshold, and then it kind of automatically makes its way over slowly, slowly, and then it fires and then relaxes, and then it automatically makes its way over slowly and then relaxes. So it's pacemaking activity. In the fast response, you actually have sodium channels where the impulse needs to come there, touch them, open sodium channels, sodium comes in, and then it fires. Pretty traditional, like neurons. So that is the difference, yeah. the latter, the muscle. So yeah, I, when I said this, pacemakers are by themselves independent and they have their own clock, that's partially true because there is a nerval, nervous system control, which is the parasympathetic tone from the vagus nerve. And so what happens is they, the, the channels that I told you that operate in this phase zero of the slow, they're under parasympathetic innervation, those channels. So it's not from the heart, it's from the brain or from the nerve. And so those channels in the phase zero are controlled by the vagus nerve. So what happens is, when, you, when your muscle has gotten stronger and you realize you don't need that much cardiac output when I'm sitting, because I'm an athlete, like when I'm sitting, I'm not using that much blood, why do I need that much? Then the brain and the, re the reflex systems adapt to use the vagus nerve to tone down your pacemaker and make it less, because you don't need extra blood when you're just sitting here. You know, it's uncomfortable. So you become relaxed and you still get the same perfusion as everybody else does, so, because your heart's pumping out more with each beat. So, um, I already talked about SA node controlling host rhythmicity. This is what I'm telling you. The slow response fibers are present on AV node, SA node, and some in the Purkinje also have some firing system properties. And the reason why sinoatrial node activates the AV node and not the AV node is because if you notice the basal rates, the internal rates are higher in the SA nodes, between 70 and 100 usually. So it usually supersedes. There are diseased pathology where SA node is damaged because of something, in which case the AV node will sometimes take over and we call it junctional rhythms and they're bad and then we treat them and then it's a different story, but don't worry about that. So this is basically why the AV node has a slower frequency of firing naturally on SA node is because they have less gap junctions. You know, gap junctions just holes which exchange ions and cells. This is just a picture of how EKG is taken. I wouldn't worry about EKG, that's way too advanced, just kind of to show you what this looks like when we connect electrodes on our chest, and any of you will have EKGs that will look similar. Um, this is just like a quick pictorial representation of signal transmission. The red lines are the electrical signals, and the blue line shows how those electrical signals contribute to the EKG. So it's just for your viewing pleasure. So you can watch it at the end.
Uh, this diagram, I won't go into detail because I could spend like an hour just talking about this whole thing. But I think the main idea is that we studied electrically and hydraulically. This kind of combines it and puts it all together. There's pressure volume relations. There's the EKG. There's volume, like volume pressure, EKG, all in one. And you can see with each phase of the heart where the contraction is, where the valve opens. I really recommend that you guys sit down with this figure for a while in groups or by yourself and just walk through the cardiac cycle and see if you understand everything on this. Like, I won't go over this right now because it'll take forever, but this is everything we've covered and everything that you've known from previous lectures all put together in one diagram. And this covers a lot of what we've studied.